Okay, our so our final um, lightning round speaker for uh, the big talk from Small Libraries 2024 is going to talk about Farmers Day fundraising. It sounds like fun. Um, Amber Sweetland from another Nebraska speaker. Yay! Um, and in uh, Kimball, they have population served about 2,500. Is that still as accurate? Yeah. Yep. All right. So, um, Amber, yeah, tell us all about what you've been doing in Kimball. So, um, Farmers Day is our um, annual fundraising, or it's our annual Farmers Day, Founders Day uh, celebrations. Um, so, to start, let's just talk about Kimball a little bit. Uh, we are a. Hold on, my slides are not working correctly. I should be able to. Uh, so we are a, a relatively small community. Um, we're relatively easy to not know where we are. So we are 20 miles from the Colorado border and 20 miles from the Wyoming border, right there in the corner. Uh, we're right off the 80, so we get a decent amount of people going through, but it, we're a small community. Um, so we needed to fundraise because we ended up uh, losing $30,000 in projected revenue. So how that ended up happening, uh, there was a half cent uh, tax reduction. Um, that half cent tax on like sales tax had been in place forever and it was up for renewal uh, to be voted on. Well, there wasn't great communication as to where that money was actually going uh, to the citizens in the community uh, to the extent that I didn't even realize that we were getting a portion of that funding. Um, so because no one knew where the money was going, nobody wanted to pay it. So it did not go through. Uh, so when it came time for budget season, that's when I found out that we were losing a whole lot of money. Um, I hate going over budget. I hate spending more than I actually have. So thankfully though, the, the city council didn't actually reduce my budget. So that was good, but I still didn't wanna spend more than I was gonna have. So we knew that we needed to start fundraising. So Farmer's Day, like I said, is our, uh, it's our Founder's Day celebration. So it's a three day celebration that is always the last weekend of September. Um, there's activities and, and community events and things like that throughout the entire weekend. Um, we knew we needed to get involved in the actual planning process for Farmer's Day because in years past there had been just a lack of communication, uh, some not great advertising, uh, some confusions in the actual scheduling. There was a lot of issues that we knew we could help out with and because we wanted to really do a fundraising push during this weekend, uh, we wanted to make sure that there wasn't any conflicts going on. Uh, so my assistant director and myself both ended up on the Farmer's Day Committee and we were able to really help out with a lot of the aesthetics with the flyers, um, the actual scheduling, just all kinds of different things that it was helpful for the, the committee and the events and us. So everybody has a book sale. Uh, this is something we've always done. It's annual, it's always a hit. Uh, we have to do it, it clears space but it's tons of work. Um, we all know this, but we don't have a choice in the matter. You have a captive audience when people are coming in to look at these books. So we knew we could take advantage of all of those people being here um, and run the other fundraising events. So during the uh, year we have, all year long, we have a uh, Friends of the Library gift shop. Uh, so everything that's in the gift shop is a local crafter or creator in some fashion, it's all handmade products. So what we decided to do is expand that during Farmer's Day. Uh, so we cleared off all of our computer tables, our, our displays for new books, and we had these vendors that are normally here, plus a lot more, bring in their wares. Um, we have it set up so that the vendor or the crafter ends up with 80% of the sale and the Friends of the Library gets 20% of the sale. So we don't get a huge amount of this, but it brings people in for all of the other events that we're also working on. So it worked out really well. Um, and it's a good way to support the local businesses as well. So a bake sale, everybody has bake sales. Um, they're always a hit, but we do it a little bit differently. Um, we nickel and dime things to death. Uh, we know that a child who's walking by, who's asking for 20 bucks from their parents for a whole cake, they're not gonna get that $20. But if they have, they see a prepackaged, um, you know, couple of brownies or some cookies for a dollar, parents are going to give them a dollar. Uh, so that's how we end up making most of our money on the bake sale. Um, it's something that we integrate right into the middle of the library. So people are walking by, it smells great and it looks good. 
so it's easy to do. So our salsa contest is a, is a really fun one. Uh, this is an event that had been going on for many, many years, eight years ago during Farmer's Day, and then it kind of fizzled out. Um, it was a very special thing to my heart because I just thoroughly enjoyed participating in the salsa contest, so I wanted to bring it back. Um, so I checked with all the people who had run it initially. They had no issue with it. So this was the second year that we reintegrated it into Farmer's Day. Um, we have two different categories, the red and the green salsa. Um, the participants can bring in their salsa ahead of time and it's free for them to compete. Uh, where we make the money is the tasting and the voting. Um, so it's $2 to be able to do that. They get a vote for each category. It's a completely blind taste test. So the only person who actually knows who belongs to each salsa is me and I don't get to participate. Um, it's a huge hit and, and, and people love it. And it's just a tasty thing that we put on right after the parade uh, is complete. And since we're pretty close to the parade route, we get all of these people walking by, they see us outside and it works really well. And here's a picture of the salsa contest. Um, you can see all of the people there milling around getting their salsa and our, our very stern looking uh, advertising dude uh, who very adamantly told people they needed to come and taste salsa and buy baked goods. He he's very that. taking it very seriously with that tie and yes, yes this is a yes he's very hit. hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pie a city guy. Uh, this was a new one that we did this year. It's it, it was so fun. Um, so this came from a brainstorming session uh, when we really should have been doing other things. I had just found out that we were losing $30,000 and I knew that we needed to get more fundraisers going, something that would be fun, that would get people involved. Um, there was a lot of drama going on at the time. There had been some issue with some city department and a lot of the people in the community were very irritated about it. And so we were like, okay, let's give them a fun, light way to vent some frustrations uh, that will make us some money. And this is what came from it. Um, I was able to get somebody from every single department, including the mayor, the city administrator, uh, one of the police officers to participate. Uh, so we sold raffle tickets. There was um, three tickets that were gonna be pulled from the pot. And those pe three people got to pie the city employee of their choosing. Um, the big thing with this is don't ask people to do something you're not willing to do yourself. So I was the representative for the library. Uh, no one chose to pie me, yay. Um, but there is definitely some stuff that we learned from this that we're gonna change next year. Um, you have to constantly be willing to, to adapt things. Um, we didn't have a good sound system st set up. Uh, we did have the local DJ doing the announcing for me, but he's not quite that loud. Um, so we'll definitely fix that next year. But it was such a huge hit. Um, this is not something that people really buy ahead of time. I did have a few individuals come in and like they dropped 50 bucks on enough raffle tickets so that they had a chance to pie the mayor because they were annoyed. And that's great. And I'm totally happy with that. But most of the tickets were sold right there on the spot. Um, right after the parade completed, we I sent some of my very loud friends downtown and they very loudly announced that they were selling raffle tickets and they sold tons of tickets. While that was going on, I was here at the library and I'm pretty loud too. Um, so while we had hundreds of people in here, I was really loudly talking about how I was selling raffle tickets and to buy them from me. Um, be a little obnoxious. It definitely helps to sell things. Um, I had people buy tickets just to shut me up, which works. I'm okay with that. Uh, but it was super fun and we will definitely be doing this for years to come. Here's some pictures of the actual pieing. Um, everybody who ended up pied were super good natured about it and, and it was fun. Um, so some other stuff that we ended up doing, uh, we got involved with some events that Farmer's Day was, you know, some of the Farmer's Day events, I said that, um, that weren't fundraising events so that we could uh, raise awareness for what we were doing. Uh, so we walked in the parade, um, we have, six different book characters represented there. We've got Hunger Games, Outlander, The Magic School Bus, Little House on the Prairie, Winnie the Pooh, and The Great Gatsby. Um, I didn't even fully realize that there was a competition, but we ended up winning second place. Yay. 
Um, another event that we participated in, or we actually put on, was a Mario Kart tournament. Um, it was totally free. Um, it was mostly children that participated in this, and the Farmers Day Committee purchased the prizes for each of the leagues, a pro league and an amateur league. Um, my son-in-law and his brother ended up dressing as uh, Mario and Luigi, and they put this on. Um, and you can see a very happy kid there with her gift card to the ice cream shop. It went really well, and it gave us the opportunity to kind of remind people of what was going on at the library at the same time and kind of hopefully get some people to wander over to us too. So advertising is the most important thing with all of this stuff, and you can't just go, you know, one or two different avenues. You have to really blanket the whole community. Um, so we had maps and flyers on sandwich boards in a bunch of different businesses and locations throughout the community not just for our stuff, but for everything that was going on during Farmer's Day. Um, we went nuts on our social medias and we had everything that we were doing up on those. Um, I write a column in the paper. So we, uh, I think three weeks in a row, I listed pretty much everything that was going on. And I wrote a couple of different columns about why it was so important for us to do these things. Um, I did a radio interview and then they recorded it and they replayed it like the day of I think it was the Friday of Farmer's Day. Um, but the most important thing is word of mouth. If you're enthusiastic and you really love what you're doing and you're passionate about it, then talk about it to anyone who will listen to you until they want you to go away. Um, <laughs> it really helps and it got people in here. So the key takeaways, um, it's not possible if you don't have the most amazing staff in the world. And I think that they're right there to say hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, and uh, now I lost my place. <laughs> um, it's tons of work, but it's super, super fun. Uh, you have to to create events that that you are passionate about and that you are excited about. Um, you have to plan ahead of time. Uh, we started all of this planning probably three months in advance, uh, but it worked and, and it was very successful for us. Um, you have to really communicate with the different groups in your community, um, your staff, uh, all of the planning committees for all of the things that are going on during events like this. Um, and patrons love to help. Um, they don't wanna just give you money all the time. They just, they want to participate in things. So make sure that there's an opportunity for them to, to bake some cookies and bring them in or, or whatever you need. Uh, help out with the book sale organization. That's always tons of work and people love helping out with that too. Um, one thing that I have noticed more than anything else is if you can possibly be charming, do so. Um, if people like you, they're more willing to give you money. Uh, so be likable. And that's it. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Amber. That looks like a lot of fun. And like you said, a lot of work, but a couple of months playing is not bad. Um, to come up with all these ideas. And as you said, some of them are things you are already doing that you just like transfer them to this particular event that was coincidentally happening, yeah. So being able to be uh, creative or on the fly, do things like that is great. Um, so does anybody have any questions for Amber? Um, she mentioned a lot of uh, things that they did. Um, so if you have any questions about it, you wanna know more detail, we have a couple of minutes, you can answer questions. And um, doo -doo -doo -doo. all right, just double checking things here. Doo -doo -doo. Good. Um, so the first question I have, someone wants to know, funny, uh, who was hit with a pie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everyone uh, ended up actually pied or? <laughs> I mean, oh, where did my slide go? I have to go back to that one. I forgot there who what departments they were. The there. people got to pick who they wanted to hit with a pie. Yes, so um, so our DJ, he's the real tall guy there. Um, he was the one who actually pulled the names because I didn't want anyone to say that I was, you know, picking people that wouldn't pie me. Um, <laughs> so uh, the guy with the hat on, he is from our uh, electric department. No, he's from Streets. Uh, the second guy is from the electric department, and he's also one of our volunteer firefighters. Um, and then the last guy with the towel being thrown in his face, that was actually really awesome. He, uh, the lady whose name was pulled, she's just like the super sweet lady. And he asked if she would mind if his granddaughter was able to do it. And so of course she gave up her opportunity to pie somebody. And so his granddaughter, like 
she just smashed that thing in his face and rubbed it around. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, what was great about this is um, after we were all done and the official pieing was done, all of these workers, they were prepared to get pied and they didn't, or most of them didn't. So oh. they were like, well, let's get some more supplies and let the kids pie whoever they want to just for fun. And so we all stood there getting pied for like half an hour. Um, <laughs> the very, very last one, I, I was like, okay, I can't, because nobody had pied me at this point. And I'm like, okay, I can't not be pied when I made you guys do this. Yeah, so sure. um, this four year old came and she, she just barely touched my face with the pie. It was really sweet. <laughs> All right, all right, so we got a bunch of other questions coming in, we'll get them answered here. Um, okay. So here's a good important, when doing the bake sale or food uh, contest type thing, um, how do you handle the liability with food allergies or uh, contamination? So anyone who asks, we let them clearly know that there was absolutely no protections of any kind. Um, we didn't accommodate for gluten-free or, or nut allergies or anything like that. Um, in our community, people aren't, uh, I mean, there's plenty of people who can't have these things, but mm -hmm. they're happy to cover their own bases. If, if there's even a chance that they don't, they don't participate, um, we never had a problem. I think this is the kind of the opposite of making something, of re of it, something that everyone can eat or use and doing the opposite of saying, it's, this is all homemade, it's gonna be what it's gonna be and, you know, don't come over here if you if you're worried. Um, you, yeah. you the we have plants that. they could buy, and, and, and you have so many other options too. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of questions about how much you made. Um, what was your biggest profit? How much did you make? What was your biggest profit maker? And then um, I hope this was not what happened. But uh, did the money you raised get specifically set aside for the library, or did it get deposited into the city coffers? <clears throat> so we have. I mean. We're integrated into the city, uh, but we have all of our own line items. So, right. yes, it was don't or it was put into the city coffers, but it was in our portion of it. So, uh, it was so it's definitely not something uh, they can touch. Uh, allotted to this is libraries, the library's money. It was the library's events. Yes, um, we made about four thousand dollars on these events, which I know for a lot of people isn't huge, but for us it was massive. Um, mm -hmm. And the biggest money maker was the pie um the dj it was funny a lot of the guys were giving him grief because he wasn't up for being pied and he hadn't bought any raffle tickets at that point and so he whips out a hundred dollar bill and he's like okay give me 50 tickets uh. um and i'm like uh, you know i didn't even have the tickets with me so i had to send a young person running back to the library to get them because a whole bunch of people bought some like right before we actually started it which was fine with me mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, so for more info about this activity, someone's asking, um, we'll have this, the presentation, the slides here. Uh, I don't, I didn't notice if you have your contact info on there or not, or the yeah. website in your slides. I know we have a link yeah. to your, the, the Kimball Library website on the Big Dog page. Um, My right email, there. hold on, I'll pull it back up. Yeah, but, it was right at the beginning. There we go, question and feel free. Three. I'm happy to share flyers or anything, anything about what anything we did. Um, yeah. It was fun, and it's really fun to talk about. <laughs> it sounds like it was a great thing. Yes, yeah, a great, uh, uh, a great day. Um, all right. Yeah. So if you it do was, have any other questions or anything you want to know um, more um, about what they did in Kimball, reach out to Amber. She'd be happy to share. We're always happy to share what we're doing here in Nebraska. All right. Thank you so much.